Jumbo from Disney's Animal Kingdom. We're here today because... For new things. For new things. There is and some new and returning entertainment. There's some things that are going away that we need to go check out. And my birthday's tomorrow. So we need to go get pick you up a birthday button. birthday button. Let's go get a birthday button. Should we? And then after that, should we do new things or prehistoric things? Well, we got to see what times are, so. True. Okay, birthday button. Thank you. So this is a pretty popular tip, but in case you didn't know, you can actually get celebration buttons for free when you're here at the parks. They have several different ones. Obviously, I got one for celebrating my birthday, but they even have ones that are for your first visit, happily ever after if you're celebrating a honeymoon or anniversary. And then they also have just like a general, I'm celebrating for whatever it is that you're celebrating. These are free and fun, and it's fun to wear around the parks because then everyone tells you happy birthday or congratulations or whatever it is that you're celebrating. And not guaranteed, but you never know. You might get some pixie dust too. There you go. <laughs> so that is a little bit of kind of return, kind of sort of returning entertainment. So that is uh, Viva Gaia. They have been playing for a while. However, they haven't had the dancers in a really long time, like since before COVID, I think. Right? I don't. I don't remember. I don't know. It's been a very, very long time since they've had the dancers. But they recently brought the dancers back, which is very exciting. I'm always happy to see more live entertainment in the parks because I think that's just something that makes Disney parks very unique. But we checked times and the shows we were wanting to see are not happening until later. But Dinosaur says it's only a 10 minute wait right now. So we're gonna go hit that up. We're gonna take advantage of these prehistoric offerings before they go extinct. director of the Dino Institute, and I hope you enjoyed those quaint exhibits in the old wing. In a perfect blending of science and technology, the Dino Institute has created the Time Rover, an amazing vehicle that will literally transport you to the age of the dinosaurs. How? That's proprietary. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller, and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. If I can bring you back from the Cretaceous period, it stands to reason that I can bring back a live dinosaur with you. And not just any dinosaur. Take a look at this guy. Right now, our dino should be about here, at the very end of the Cretaceous period. That's where you're going today. I arrived, it seems, just in time to correct a little misstatement. Dr. Marsh. That is impossibly close to the giant asteroid impact that destroyed most life forms on Earth. We were just talking about seat belts. Plug them in, use them. It can get kind of choppy out there, so keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. Oh, and one more thing. Those lots of coordinates. <laughs> We're in. Now, here's the drill. You follow the homing signal to the iguanodon. Then, I'll enlarge the transport field, and boom, you're back with one additional passenger extra large. Time travel commencing in T minus 10 seconds and counting. This is Seeker. Listen up. We've got to get in, grab the iguanodon, and get out before the asteroid hits. Let's roll. Let's go get that dino. Computer, what are you tracking? Styracosaurus. Not our dino. Oliaramus. Hadrosaur. Raptor. Time to get 
is serious. Locking autopilot on homing signal. Now, computer, full stop. Identify. Carnivores. Definitely not our dino. Go, go, go. Computer, now. Carnivores. <laughs> That's it! Abort mission! Abort! Abort! The Guanadon. Forget it! Get them out now! Asteroid impact. Brace yourself! This is it! They're not gonna make it! They're not gonna make it! Mission accomplished. You made it! I better find him before security does. Thanks for everything! <laughs> Fun times. Uh, I like that ride. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely got a few new cracks on my uh, screen protector. Oops. <laughs> it kind of got pinched, like, right in between me and Mark Allen and the seatbelt, so... The seatbelt, because it's like the only thing holding you in, it just like, I feel like I have a hernia. I always just, like, like press oh. my feet. I like press my feet up against the thing and Maybe I, that's what I'm doing. I use that to like brace myself. I just, I just don't like that ride system. It's I love it. So. I told Mark Allen, I'm curious to see what happens when it changes to Indiana Jones, what they're going to do with the queue. Because I feel like the queue for that, there's not very much <laughs> queue. So that'll be interesting to see how they how they transform that. Do yeah. that. What should we do now? I don't know. Was there anything else in Dino Land that we wanted to do? I don't know. Ooh. I, I know something I want to go look at. What? You should know. Oh. Okay. We learned of a new, like, little f fun Easter egg the other day. So we're going to head over there and show you. But if you want to learn more about... All Dino Land. We did a whole video about Dino Land, so make sure you go watch that one if you haven't after this one. We were at Chester and Hester's, and right on the front side that faces Dino Rama, if you look up in these rafters, you'll see some signs, and they're double sided. So you have to be like on the restroom side looking into Dino Land. It says, When in Florida, be sure to visit Epcot. And not just like any Epcot logo. It's like the OG Epcot logo. I think it's such a fun Easter egg. What does it say going the other way? It says rough scaly skin making you groan. Don't despair. Use fossil foam. Those are truly the things that I'm going to like miss the most about Dino Land is just there's so many fun little things to look for. One of my favorite things in Dino Land that I'm going to probably miss the most is like the interns, like the lore of this land, they've added Osaurus to everything. So when you're here, if you happen to be here before Dino Land closes, make sure you keep your eyes out for Osaurus after everything. I know there's a really fun one on the Airstream right out that's like connects to Restaurant Osaurus. See, Restaurant Osaurus, that's one of them. It's like Airstream Osaurus or something. It says something like that. It, I'm going to I'm going to miss those. Hi, Kevin. We decided on finding Nemo. I think we're just going to slowly make our way around. We got all day. What? My button came undone. Oh, that's unfortunate. You got a little See, rough on dinosaurs. See, that's how rough dinosaur is. <laughs> We remember the three R's. Rescue, rehabilitate, and...
shots. Oh, that part. Oh, that part is scary. Oh, no. <laughs> nope. It all started with a little clownfish named Nemo. Oh, what's the use of floating there? It's time to head over to Expedition Everest. I think the wait went back down to like a 35 minute wait. So that's not too terrible. We'll see if it's actually that long because it's really not very busy today. And it is, I can't get over how nice it is today. It's only just now 80 degrees and it's like 1230. To put it into perspective, Hurricane Milton just passed. Today is Saturday, October 12th. So today is technically the first like non-party day for Magic Kingdom since yeah. the parks have reopened. So I feel I like everyone's there. A lot of there. people are there today. Yeah. So it's making Animal Kingdom nice and not busy. Chill. Everest doesn't look very long. There, I don't see people like spilling out of the queue, which is always a good sign. So it's 12.30 now. Let's see how long the line actually ends up being. So rumor has it, I haven't actually tested it, that if you ring the bells, it's supposed to sing, it's a small world. <laughs> I don't know, man. Hall Who knew that they had Halloween Horror Nights at Walt Disney World? That was so fun. We sat in the front, and I don't think I've ever done the front row on that ride. Mark Allen thinks that he has, but I don't. I don't think I have. That is like a totally, totally different ride in the front. That was really fun. It's also really fun at night, especially the Yeti, mm -hmm. because you can like the strobe effect just works so much better at night. That was a blast. So I would say the wait was was pretty spot on. It was about 30 minutes, but it didn't feel like it though. It you know wasn't why? too bad. You know why? Because I was I was ringing them bells, like a bell ringer. You can call me Quasimodo. So dumb. No. <laughs> we are heading around to Maharaja Jungle Trek because there's a pregnant tiger. And we all know that I love tigers, so we got to go see her. We're going to learn some tiger facts today because I don't know how long they are pregnant for. Yeah, Mark Allen wants to ask the cast members how long tigers are pregnant for, so we're going to find out. But first, we're going to go to the bathroom and fill up our water bottle. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I did see a little sliver of tiger butt, but it was the dad. Um, mom is not out right now, um, probably because she said that she's getting kind of close to having the babies. I asked how long the gestation period is, and she said it's typically between like 96 to a little over 100 days, so basically like three months. Um, that's really fast, so she did say that 
it should be happening soonish. I don't know when soonish is, but then I also asked, I was like, will the cubs end up staying here long term or will they end up going? And she said, usually they'll keep the cubs for about two to three years because that's how long the mom, like to make sure the mom can like make sure that the cubs, you know, can survive <laughs> and learn all the things that they need to learn. Um, and then because they have a really good like species survival program they'll be in contact with other like wildlife places and zoos and things to see um who they can kind of mate those little cubs up with so that they can make more baby tigers the more you know love tigers so cool we are sitting right outside of feathered friends in flight which is like the bird show uh because one of the new slash returning live entertainment offerings. It's called Beats and Strings. And so it's a guy, he has a sitar. It's a sitar. A sitar. Um, and then there's like a, a drum situation. It's interesting because in the My Disney Experience app, there's no times listed, but we asked a really kind cast member um, who works at like the little popcorn stand right next to it. We were like, do you know when they're coming out? And they said that he was getting ready to come back out at like 1.50, so it's only like 10 minutes from now. So we're like, oh, perfect. We will just hang out for a little bit. It's not every day that you get to see someone playing a sitar. Yeah. I'm here for the vibes today. And our next song is called Mali's Song. Mali's Song is a beautiful little song, an interpretation with our sitar and tabla. Just a talk between sitar and tabla, not too much with the electronic vibes. And one song that comes from the combination of sitar and tabla. Enjoy. <laughs> I loved that. That was very cool. I don't think I've ever seen an instrument like that performed live before. I've never seen a sitar for, like played live. Obviously, you, you, that's the most iconic like probably sound from India. So if you've ever been to like an Indian restaurant and they're playing some of those like music videos, that is the instrument that you're oh. hearing. Um, as well as you'll hear it a lot in the soundtrack, especially in like the Asia, Asia section of Animal Kingdom, you'll hear that instrument throughout the soundtrack. The really cool thing about a sitar is that they do a lot of like bending of the strings. This is my music nerd coming out, by the way. If you I was going to say, did you have any fun facts about sitars? Because so, I know nothing. <laughs> in, in Indian music, they, they really play a lot of what's called semitones. So in Americanized and even like European music, you have that like iconic 12 notes chromatic scale, where in like Asia, a lot of Asian and uh, especially very heavily Indian culture, they, they do like a semitone. So instead of that's that kind of like, uh, yeah, that so you get that you get they, <laughs> they really like lean a lot on on kind of those like you're like, wow, it almost sounds like it's like I, riffing. I, yeah, yeah, you're, you're riffing. I think of like that, the scene in uh, The Office when Angela is like, I hate jazz music. And Dwight's like, yeah, just play the right notes. <laughs> it, a lot of it might sound like that to you, but it's they're, they're playing those notes and bending those strings intentionally. So. It's very beautiful. It was really cool. I liked that some of the songs they did with kind of like a background track to kind of give it some like... But then yeah. at the end, they did do just basically like an acapella, like yeah, they just did the instruments. just the drums so and like cool. they could really showcase their skills. Yeah. So, so I'm really glad we caught that. We did figure out. So they play. The reason why they don't have set set times is because it's dependent on when the bird show is done. Right. So they will play in between the bird show. 
yeah. the feathered friends in flight. So they have to wait for that show to end. And then as soon as it ends, that's when they will start playing. The right. set was like 10 ish, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, give or take. So not like super long. But, but yeah, so because the bird show is obviously live animals, they can't necessarily control the ending yeah. of that. So they're basically, they may or may not just be sitting on the stage just waiting for the next show to be done. Yeah, so if you see them out there or in, but not playing yet, just hang out for a few because you can kind of tell when the bird show's over because you'll hear like, wow. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, I think it's time for a treat. Uh, this is a treat that's been on my list to try for a really long time. We just haven't. But we're headed over to Tamu Tamu Refreshments. Mark Allen doesn't even know what we're getting. So, I'm excited. We have our treat. So from Tammy Tammy Ref Refreshments, this is the pineapple crumble cake. No. No. Pineapple crisp sundae. Pineapple crisp. This is the pineapple crisp sundae. So it comes with like a little vanilla pineapple cake situation, ice cream on top, pineapple sauce, and then like crumbles. So good. This is only, I think it was like seven something like seven-ish dollars with tax. So it's a pretty good size portion. Okay, let's get a bite. Oh my God, that is really good. Mmm. The pineapple is a little more subtle. That ice cream is really good with it. It's like a pineapple crumble. Oh my God, Mark Allen's gonna die when he has this. Let's, let's see Mark Allen's reaction. <laughs> Is this as good as the guava danish that I love from Kusafiri? Oh, this is better. This is better? Yeah. That's so good. But that crumb, crumb, crumb cake, crumble cake, that's really good. So not only is there like pineapple in this like sauce stuff that's all over the ice cream, but it's also baked into the crumb cake as well. It's really good. Not dry. The ice cream's nice and good. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I still love my guava danish because I'm an old man, but we might need to uh, go over to Kusafiri and get a uh, coconut coffee if, Maybe. if they're still open. Maybe. Well, friends, we've got bad news. Apparently, Kusafiri closes for whatever reason, I guess the season or something. It apparently closes at 11 o'clock now. So if you want your coconut iced coffee, I guess you just have to get here early because they only have breakfast. So no more Harissa chicken wrap or those delicious kettle chips. I'm sad. Why does everything at this park close early, including the park itself? I'm not salty about it at all, if you can't tell. <laughs> okay, what does it do? It croaks. Caleb? I thought, I thought you hit it like a drum. I mean, I guess you can do that. You could do it. But. Percy would hate that. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's such a cool little thing, though. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't know it did that. No. How would I know that? Because these are, like, everywhere. At every gift shop everywhere. Bull. I call bull. Bullfrog. <laughs> bull. Bullfrog. <laughs> I have a teeny tiny one of these at my house. Their finger, um, oh my God, what are they called? Their, their finger chimes. Can you hear it? This one sounds a lot prettier than the one that we have at home. <laughs> and it's so pretty. That one's only $19.99. That's not bad. That's really beautiful. There's like a giraffe or something on it. 
Yeah, everybody say Jambo! Jambo! Oh no, you're in Africa. It simply means hello, hello. How about a big one? It's gonna be wild, you know. Everybody say Jambo! Jambo! All right, is everybody ready to party? Say yeah, yeah! Yeah! Purudika is the name of the band. If you've just joined us, you're in the right place at the right time. This very song is called Diamonds on the Souls of the by the great Paul Simon. It's party time. Say hi to Miss Lala on the dance floor. Just everybody say yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People say she's crazy. She's got diamonds on the soles of her shoes. Well, that's one way to lose this one. And no one sees that you got yellow hair. Leaving behind lots of promises. And you got yellow Two. Together we are Puru Diga Band, and you're in the right place at the right time. Thank you for stopping by. Puru Diga simply means to refresh oneself in Swahili. All kinds of refreshments here. We're gonna see you at 10 after. Okay, Asante sir. Amazing. They were so good. That was like day made right there. Like that was so worth it. That was kind of the one thing I really wanted to make sure we caught today. Incredible. Live entertainment is back at at least at Animal Kingdom. Yeah, no, that was that was like the best thing we saw did all day. That and was so fun. It's so cool to me that they like represent the culture through music in this park so well. Mm -hmm. My favorite too was the saxophone player. I was taking a picture of him and he uh, snuck in a little happy birthday song in. I don't know if we got that on video or not. No, but we didn't. Well, at least I did it. I, yeah, I, we'll have to obviously play it back. <laughs> It was like very subtle. He snuck it in just just for Kayla. It was really cool. I, really, I heard it. I, really I don't. Did you hear it? Lot. No. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> but I would say like this is 100% of any of like honestly any of the live entertainment in this park that you can catch. I highly recommend doing so. But that not to miss. That's amazing. That was so good. Yeah. I do. I don't think they perform every single day. Right. I think they alternate between them and the Tamu Tamu drummers. So you'll have to check the app to see like what days they're playing. I think if you go on the Disney website and you search it, I think you can see which days that they will be playing so yeah. that you can kind of plan accordingly. The Tamu Tamu drummers are also very good. They're honestly a very similar kind of like interactive dance music situation yeah very similar just a little bit different vibe i would suggest if you have an umbrella that would be a great time to use it because or do this in the like one of the early morning times because we're uh we were sweating just standing there we weren't even dancing <laughs> but it was so good i couldn't walk away i know so that was really fun but i think now we might go and try and hit up the safari yep. we're getting tired so i think we're kind of starting to do the last few things before we head out for the day, but I think Safari is next. Safari so good. Okay. 
We're just walking straight on the ride. Woohoo! There's that sun. The UV index is very warm today. It's a little, it's a little hot. It's honestly not too bad. If you stand in the shade, it's really beautiful, but that was a fun safari. That was a great safari. One of the best ones I, I've had in a little while. I that still was my... haven't seen the baby elephant though. But you know what I did see for the first time? Barely. We, I don't even think we got it on camera. Was, was the, the warthog. warthogs. I've never seen the warthogs on the safari before. What is your favorite animal on the safari, Mark? Um, I, I think the painted dogs. My favorite? are the s'mores. The s'mores. The spring box. The spring box. Or as I like to call them, a s'mora, s'mora lope. S'mora lope. Oh it's my like God. A, a s'more and an antelope. It's a s'mora lope. We're taking the walkway over to Pandora to finish out our day. I got hungry. So we're gonna go to Satuli Canteen and get a little bite to eat. And then, Maybe ride another ride or two, depending on what the weights are. We shall see. Also, if you're looking for a nice quiet spot, like in the late afternoon, come back on this pathway between Africa and Pandora. Fest it's kind of like past Festival of the Lion King. Yeah, it'll have to be like, you'll have to wait until like after all of the showings for Festival of the Lion King is done. But there's like no one back here. Yeah. And if you want to learn more, tips and tricks on some quiet spots in this park. We've done a whole video. Oh, yeah, we have. So that'll be linked in the description box below. Okay, we didn't show dinner because it wasn't anything that exciting. We got the cheeseburger pods from Satuli Canteen, which are basically like if you were to smash a McDonald's hamburger into a little steam pod. They're delicious. I just needed a little bit of protein because I really hadn't had much today. But now we are hopping in line for Navi River Journey. The wait time says 40 minutes, but there's really not that many people here. So we'll see. It is 4.35. 4.35. It doesn't look awful in here. Let's see. A wrap on my birthday Animal Kingdom day. It was and a really we, fun day. And we did new things and we did prehistoric things. Yeah, a lot of the live entertainment that was new for us was so good. I loved that. That was definitely the highlight of the day. It was a good time. Live entertainment is definitely like until it comes back, you don't realize how much is honestly missing from the parks. But truly, like having that back here at Animal Kingdom makes me extremely hopeful for the other three parks to get some of that live entertainment back. Looking at you, citizens of Hollywood. But now it is time for us to go home and rest because tomorrow is my actual birthday and we have a whole other set of things that we are doing tomorrow that we will be filming a video. So make sure you're on the lookout for that and subscribe so you don't miss out when that video comes out. And that is all we have for you guys today. Now go create your ever after.